Lord. I'm here to have a cash payment. Well, we thank you again for the opportunity to gather together today, just men and ladies from this community, for to dedicate themselves to the cause of helping others. Pray that you would guide and direct us forward to make decisions that would benefit our neighbors and our friends. And God, that you would help us, Lord, to be about the business of the community in an efficient way. Thank you for all that you have allowed us to be a part of. And we pray that you bless the remainder of this meeting. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 procedures and I may have over went too far with this but it's just saying that at our next meeting we will be adopting our millage again for the 2015 calendar year and they just wanted an announcement at a regular meeting so that they'd have their more than 30 day and less than 60 day notice um, that's what that's about all right presentation on the clock all right, let me bring, I, I brought several salesmen here. I just wanted to give them about three or four minutes of your time just to let you know what they've got and their products, and then um, we'll make a decision later. All right. What do y'all got in Kevin, you want to go first, or you get your? I'll let him go first. You want us to wait out here? No, we're ready for you. The board's wait for you to tell us about your fire trucks. Which one? Which one do you want? Which one? Who starts first? Just, just you can start. It doesn't make any difference to me. This is all right now. We're working on a state contract. Okay, you want us to do this all with all of us in there? One at a time. I don't know. You want one at a time? You can go ahead. You can go ahead. All right, yeah. one at a time. <laughs> Sounds good to me, brother. Good evening, gentlemen, ladies. Oh, I have a proposal here for a pumper, 250 gallons of water, 250 uh, pump. It's on an international chassis. It is built in Michigan. It is a demo truck from HME. It has a stainless steel pump module and stainless steel bed with the roll-up doors. <clears throat> also uh, provided a, a list of options that the chief talked to me about um, in here. It is on GSA contract. Um, it's kind of a no frills, no thrills kind of truck, but it, it serves a purpose. It, it is a nice little truck, and it is a, available immediately for immediate delivery. Uh, it's sitting down in home. It was supposed to be here tonight, but our driver got sick and didn't tell anybody anything until this morning. So they kind of put us in a bond. So if anybody has any questions on it. Pictures are of it. Yes, I, I do have a proposal. Size tanks you got on? It does not have a foam system, but I did put a, 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 a cord in there to add a foam system to it. It's an international? It is an international. And um, 
that length is it? I don't recall. Standard, standard length. Standard length. No, it doesn't look short. In other words, it doesn't look like it's cut off at the end. No, it, it's a full-size pumper with all the compartmentation necessary for a Class A pumper. Roll-up doors? Roll-up doors. What kind of pump? Uh, waters. You said 1250? 1250 pump. Does it have a, uh, what we call it, water line, you know, jump line? Jump line, uh, there is a roll quote. Roll-up jump line. There is a quote uh, to oh, yeah. add the extended bumper with the jump line in the front. That it does not have presently have one on it, but it can be added. That that's not a, a big deal. All the fabrication and everything will be done in our shop in home. <coughs> and if that particular truck doesn't fit y'all needs, we uh, do build uh, trucks down in home to fit the needs of the department. Me, I think we need to say we're pumping tankers. We got a little area. What we'll take another for? Two fifty seven. I say that's a good price on it. That's right, one hundred one ninety eight. All right now, and then that that's for the base model. And then he has this other sheet in here. It's all in the back. In the, the, back, the last page. In the back, this was an option so we get it closer to what, to what we would need. You, you take my base price and whatever options you want off that page, you just add the two prices together. That's your total price. 6500 plus. something we can keep with us to review? Yes, and I apologize for only having one copy. We can make copies. And then we'll have the board members to be able to review this stuff at their leisure between now and the next board meeting. And then if you do have some other information about pumper tanker combinations, go ahead and forward that to me. Bring okay. Me, and I can That's really through. what we need. And that's understandable. Um, uh, I was told you I was looking for a pumper, so but we we can do the pumper tanker combinations. I mean, 1,500 gallon tanks, 2,000 gallon tanks. Maybe 2,000 better. It's well, uh, ordered at 2,500 better. Okay, yeah, and, and, and we do full tankers also, and all of our trucks except for our ladder trucks are on a state contract. So. And they're are they completely made here? In home? They are. Com if it's a custom built truck, on like an international or something, it is built in Houma, Louisiana. What time is it coming? Five along fire brats. Right. What one used to be down there? Not a problem. And then uh, what's that down there? Near Eunice there was um, one down in Eunice. I don't know, there's a little bit of Baton Rouge somewhere in there. I can't remember. I don't know where it was. Ferrari. 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 Yeah, you got Ferrari and Holden. Oh, they're east of Baton Rouge. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's what I was thinking. All right, anybody got any so, questions for him? And if y'all like to see the truck, I mean, I can schedule, try to schedule another showing for y'all. Like I said, la last minute, the driver. Look at that. I'm going to let you know. I have all this contact information. Thank y'all for y'all time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. gallon Pierce FXP tanker. Um, 3,000 gallon? That's a 3,000 gallon. I, I guess uh, 
and everything you got is on the state contract. <coughs> everything, let me tell you, I'll tell you a little bit about Pierce. Uh, Pierce Fire Apparatus is 101 years old this year, uh, the oldest and largest fire apparatus manufacturer in the country. We build approximately 2,000 fire trucks a year all over the United States and overseas. <clears throat> we work through a network of dealerships. I work for a company called Simmons Martin Emergency Group based out of Houston, Texas. We cover the state of Louisiana, Texas, and New Mexico for all of Pierce uh, sales and service. Um, we are the largest dealer for Pierce uh, apparatus, and uh, we've been in business about 45 years ourselves as a dealer uh, for them. We have a huge network of service is what we really like to sell alongside of our product. We know our product's great. <clears throat> I can tell you all, anything you want to know about our product if, if you have questions because every product is different. Every truck is different. Every piece on every truck is different depending on what you want is what I would be able to explain the best. But service, uh, we have two <coughs> service centers in the state of Louisiana. We have 12 in the state of Texas and four in the state of New Mexico. Uh, we have 55 EBT specialists that are on the road at all times that can come from any one of those service centers. If I need some, I can pull some from down south, some from over west of here. It kind of makes it nice to pull guys from everywhere to come out and service your truck at your fire station versus you having to take it somewhere to do that. Um, the truck I bought is a tanker. It's a product that we offer. Uh, it's called an FXP product that we exclusively offer with the Freightliner chassis. And on this particular product that we have, we offer a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the Freightliner chassis. We're the only company that can offer that purely based on volume. We Every, every other chassis that you're going to buy on a Freightliner is going to have a three-year standard manufacturer warranty on it. And we offer the five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. That's great when your truck, you know, four or five years old, you still got some warranty left on it. Your Freightliner dealer can step in and help you out with that with those products. On warranty uh, and service, we're a one-stop shop. I don't want you having to, if you have a hail pump problem or a Freightliner problem, I don't want you calling everybody under the sun. You call one person, we'll take care of that problem for you. As far as even if it has to go back to the dealership, we'll set that appointment up for you or line that up for you. Um, we currently sold you the truck that is being finished up right now at our Houston facility. It was a stock unit. Uh, we took that truck and added features to it that would better suit the fire department. <clears throat> the truck is currently about 99.9% .9 finished. We are waiting on some valves from Akron, Ohio, from Akron Brass Company to come in to complete the installation on the booster reel. We anticipated the truck being finished today. As of today, we still don't have the valve from Akron. Their excuse is weather. Just waiting on the valve. The truck is ready and ready and ready and ready, except for the valve. Uh, as soon as it comes in, they'll bolt it up. The truck will head back this way. Uh, with our trucks, uh, every shift or three days or however you guys want to work it out, we offer full training with our trucks. We have a factory representative come in and train you on every single aspect of the truck. We'll do a PowerPoint presentation with all three shifts. And uh, for every volunteer, he'll probably be here at least two days so everybody can come in and get training on the truck from the general operation of the truck and what you should and shouldn't do when you crank it up all the way down to the foam system to pumping the truck. He'll do everything on it. Even the electronics. <laughs> he'll explain in detail the def, the regen, all those systems that you may not be familiar with. Some of you that don't drive big trucks, newer, newer ones. It's a, it's, it's a real problem these days on fire apparatus and at this point there's nothing we can do about it. Nobody builds a truck that you can't run def in yet. Um, with that being said, our product line is huge. We've built everything from a small brush truck on a Ford chassis up to the biggest ladder trucks on the ground. We build everything ourselves when it comes to a full apparatus. We build our own chassis, we build our own pumps, we build our own foam systems. We build, we're, we're a full manufacturer uh, that does that. Um, you know, this truck out here that I brought is a base model truck. It, it, is, it sits somewhere around, when it comes off the factory floor, that product sits somewhere around $200,000 to $220,000 in the price range. And you can take it, and we can do exactly what you did to your last truck, and you can 
pick and choose options that you want to put on the truck to, to better suit your, your needs. That is a base truck. So when you see it, it doesn't have a lot of the stuff that your other truck had on it. You can certainly add anything you want to those trucks. What kind of pumps on that truck? That truck has a Hale uh, 500 GPM PTO pump, which does offer the pump and roll. We can go up to a 1,000 GPM pump in that particular truck. So it is strictly just a tanker. It's not a pump tanker. It, it, has, it can pump 500 gallons a minute, and it has discharges just like a standard pumper does. But the 1,000 GPM would be more what you were talking about. You have to get up Correct. For a Class A pumper, you have to have at least 750 GPM pump. For correct, and that's not a problem. That's just a, 750 uh, to be a class A pump. All right, but that to me, I said want to go. With, uh, I'm speaking my opinion. Yes, sir. It is strictly, you know, we need pump and tanker driving. Correct. That's that is easily done. That truck can be built with a thousand GPM pump. I can build a brand new one with a two thousand GPM pump if that's what you prefer. Um, just kind of what's what, that's just what I had on hand when you asked to bring something down the show. Class A, we're going to have to have room for the air packs. Correct. If you make it a Class A pumper, you're going to have to have everything on it that a Class A pumper has, or you're really kind of yeah. defeating the purpose of getting a thousand gallon pump if it won't carry all the equipment. Right. Um, Wednesday, I'm trading that truck to my coworker for another truck similar to the one you guys bought, a pumper. Um, that I'll be running up through this way for the next probably two or three weeks. If y'all ever, you know, I, I, I'll stop by any time. Uh, I think I came by four or five times with the last truck. If anybody wants to come by after work and take a look at it, I don't have a problem doing that. It's a, it's a, pumper. It's a regular pumper. It is a four door Freightliner FXP pumper. I have a two door. I have a side mount, a two door top mount. These are stock units that we run around in. We are a custom manufacturer. If you want to sit down and spec out a truck and build it from the ground up, that's what we do 98% of the time. Demo trucks are a very small part of the business. A lot of rural areas buy the demos because work's been done. But it's really up to you on how, how you want to do it. Have you prices? I have on what? Well, like 1,250 gallon, 1,250 GPM, 1,200. Sure, I can I can work up prices on. Well, I'm on the top of your head. Yeah, off the top of my head, a, a truck like that. I mean, you're looking at to go up a thousand GPM, to go up another five hundred GPM to a thousand GPM pump. You're not talking very much, maybe five grand. Just the, whatever the price of the pump is. I'm, I'm talking about. Is it two twenty now? Yeah, I'm talking about truck you're going to be coming in. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Two hundred thirty thousand dollars. I've got a two-door just like it for 217. That's a side mount. I've got a top-mounted pump just like it sitting on my lot in Houston. It's 200 and 222. Those are all baseline prices. Uh, I think the truck that we started with on yours was what? Well, it was way up there. Then y'all came down because it's the end of the year. You came down to almost 240 something. 240, and then we added back around. 257. 257. Uh, by the time we finish adding sea lights, booster reel, suction, uh, <coughs> whatever else we added to the truck, I think we ended up at a total of 257. Any of those trucks that I have currently would be, if I added everything I added to this truck, would be less because we started at a higher base price on that particular truck. Every truck I have in stock now would be less than 250 with everything that we added to his truck. That's just what I have on the ground. I have access to probably 50 stock trucks between all over the U.S. I have a list I just have to get my hands on and see what I have on each day. We sell about 10 of these stock units a day all over the U.S. If I had a customer that was really interested in looking at a particular stock truck, I could make a phone call and have one sent this way. Is, is, there, uh, is it possible to take? Pump the taper, single cab, and make a class A pump right up. With all the equipment that has to be done. Single cab, a single cab class A pumper tanker? Sure. How much water are you want to carry? 2,500 there. 25. Here's your cutoff. 2,100 gallons is the max we can put on a single axle. Anything above that, we go to 10. It's 10 max. Okay, I go up to 3,000 gallons on a tandem axle. 
and put a high side compartment so it both side ladders through the rear just like his other truck and then we can do them all day long. Uh, look, that's the truck that's sitting out there. It would look more like that with tandem axles. Yeah. Uh, and I brought these brochures. This is just a Pierce commercial pumper and a Pierce commercial tanker, one on each side. The, the tanker can look just like that pumper, except bigger than tandem axles to make it a class A pumper tanker. Uh, I go up to 1500 GPM on the pump, no problem. 3,000 gallons of water, storage down both sides. You have all your air packs. It looks just like a big pump. Uh, that's what we need. Yes, sir. Not a problem at all. We do them all the time, and a lot of people, a lot of people go that route instead of a pump in the tanker. Yeah, uh, rural, it's like rural area. Right. Most time tankers go around with it, but the more water you carry, the better off. Yes, sir. There. And one thing that we're pushing these days, real heavy and hard, is these uh, husky foam systems that we that we manufacture, and even Foam Pro, and a lot of people do. Double your water volume. So if you have a thousand gallons of water in a, in a foam system on your truck, you're in essence carrying two thousand gallons of water. Right. So fighting power. Mm -hmm. um, what about calf systems? Have y'all got integrated calf systems? Sure. We make our own calf systems. We also sell hail and waters calf systems. Ken Three, I know we had we hadn't had good luck with the calf system we have on this little truck out here, but I've been seeing some of the newer calf systems. You can take a two and a half inch line running caps and one person can move that line around. Yes, but you're talking a price point going from in the neighborhood of $10,000 for a proportioning system to upwards closer to forty dollars and $50,000 for a full on cap system on a Class A pumper. It's an expensive option. It's really popular in Texas because they are, Louisiana is the only state on PIAL, their own rules. Everybody else is ISO. They get huge points for cash system in Texas. It, it, it makes their fire trucks go boom in points, so they're it's worth the money over there. Well, I think our next rating is ISO. Is ISO it's ISO. Twenty seventeen going to ISO. Correct. If you go to ISO, you'll want cash on everything you got because the amount of points you get on is just outrageous. Uh, everybody in Texas, rural or not, no matter the size of the truck, just about everybody over there is going to cash. And uh, I just sold the identical truck to yours, the guy that wanted your truck. Y'all were battling back and forth on who was going to buy it. He didn't buy it. He bought another one identical to it that came off the line. It comes off the line in April, and he added a $30,000 cash system to his truck. He's in Dyball, Texas. Identical truck. And uh, they just get massive, massive points over there. Okay. Uh, a couple things we do a little different than everybody else. Uh, our warranties. Our, our very strong warranties, our standard paint corrosion warranties are 10 years. Our structural warranties are 20 and 25. All of our plumbing on all of our trucks is stainless steel standard, no black iron. Nobody in the industry does warranties that strong or stainless steel plumbing standard. We do a lot of things that set us apart. Uh, we believe if we do it right and do it really, really right the first time, we have less problems with that product down the road. It's something that's helped Pierce be in the fire truck business for over 100 years and other companies are falling out right and left. Uh, just something that we, we like to do. You want still in business? They are not a Louisiana state contract. You can buy a E1 truck in this state, you would have to go to bid. Uh, everybody else here is on state contract. Uh, I remember that one big company, I thought it was E1, that's why I've been in. American La France. <laughs> They were a huge player for a long, long time. Many, many years. Yes. And the other oldest company left then. We are. We were in business 101 years this year. We had our 100 year anniversary of building fire trucks last year. Pierce is owned by Oshkosh Corporation. Oshkosh Corporation is the largest vehicle manufacturer for the United States military, period. We build all the medium duty all the heavy duty vehicles for them, all the big MRATs and all the big trucks that move everything. Oshkosh Division builds those. We utilize a lot of their technology uh, and our suspensions and stuff that, that have been really tried and true and tested. Uh, we have two other divisions. We have uh, McNeilis, which is the largest uh, dump truck manufacturer in the country. And then uh, JLG, the uh, booms, lift, lift, man lifts and stuff like that. Those are the divisions that Oshkosh currently is under their umbrella, and they try to keep it in the you know similar type things where they can share technology. 
We build all of our own ladders. Uh, we build pumps, tanks. We're, we're, we're the only sole manufacturer that can build a fire truck from the chassis to the back, other than your basic, you know, running gear and engine. And bio. Correct. <laughs> uh, now we, we do offer, uh, not in commercial cabs, but we, we, we're still the only manufacturer that can offer Detroit diesel as well, if you were to a customer. Cummins is about the only player now. Allison's the only player in the transmissions now. Any questions? Thank y'all. I appreciate the time. Like I said, I'll be back. Uh, Chief can get a hold of me. If anybody wants to look at that truck I'm running through here with next week, I'll have it all for the next couple weeks. Here's a couple brochures on that tanker out there. And then the brochures I left on just a basic pumper tanker there. Anything more specific, we have, I could overload you with brochures, but I know you don't want 50 of them. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Just send the next one in for me, Mike. Sir? Send the next guy in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Some of you may not. I'm Stephen Moffitt. I represent uh, Bonaventure. Uh, I've worked with several of you guys. I've worked with y'all in the back there. Uh, I gave y'all some packets to tell you a little bit about us, uh, what are some of the things we do, uh, our trucks, how many different varieties of trucks we, uh, we have. I also have a drawing in there that's from a truck Charlie and I worked on. It's, uh, I think that truck came in about 300, Charlie. 297, I believe. 297 is where that truck came in. You say it's now about 301, but it's I think so. Somewhere if, it's, if those increases are right. We can make changes on that truck if you're still interested in that truck. Uh, it's a pretty nice truck, wasn't it, Charlie? We had, we had four outlets for foam. Uh, had real nice lighting on it as far as scene lighting goes. Uh, we, offer some, uh, we offer some other options, too. Uh, I know Troy, you had talked about, you know, gallons. What kind of gallons are, are we looking at this next go right? Uh, 2,500 or better. 2,500 or better. Okay. If we do anything over 2,000 gallons, it's going to be on the tandem axle truck. Okay. So that's going to that's going to force up the price a little because we're going to a heavier truck. And once we get over 2,500 gallons, we'll be doing at least double frame rails, maybe triple, depending on the weight. It all, it all depends. Uh, that's a, that's the truck right there that he's looking at. Uh, that's over Freightliner chassis. Uh, front bumper extension. The front bumper extension. That one has both cross blades in the front bumper. Uh, has an extendable deck gun on it, I believe. If I remember correctly. Center here. Yeah. And yeah. also has the uh, swivel dump chute. Has the swivel dump chute on the rear where you can dump directly out of the back or you can run it off the side and you can pull up the side of your tank and, and dump. And you're looking at a tail 1250 ppm pump. Right. Right. And the pumps, <coughs> you can do Darley, you can do Hale, you can 
do waterers, uh, you can do a rose and pump. They're all very comparable in price. Uh, as far as the pump goes, the GPM on it, uh, 1200, 1250 to 1500, almost the same price. That's up to you about how you want to do that on the truck. Uh, what did you say, Troy? I was going to ask him, what did y'all just get? Did y'all just buy from Steve? Mm -hmm. They go down, they yeah. just bought, you bought two of these? Two of them truck. Yeah. We've got service guys out here running the road. Uh, we also have a extra service guy about 80 miles from here. He's over in Columbia. Uh, he catches us up when we get behind. He's a SAE, an EBT certified mechanic. Uh, he was the head mechanic at the Monroe shop. Uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis Kelly is his name. We've used him quite often. Uh, we come to you every chance we get. You buy a truck, train you, you probably won't have an issue or two before the warranty goes out. This just, just probably won't happen. So, you know, when we drive them back, we drive them close to a thousand miles. If there's something going to shake loose, it'll shake loose before we get here. So, and hopefully we can we can fix those problems. Uh, anything in particular, y'all have any questions on? Of course, we can do these trucks in, uh, you know, an extended cab or a four-door chassis, if you like. Uh, we can we can change them up however you want. You know, it's a custom business. We can put the cross lathes in the bumper. We can do speed lathes. We can do the top mount. We can we can do it just however you you want to do it. Anything else? Anybody have any questions for us, man? I don't know. I guess I did. No, last, last time I was here for a board meeting, it was uh, quite an experience. So. <laughs> 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 and, and you're on state contract, right? And we are on state contract. So uh, this particular truck that, that we've been looking at that I had just had the stuff here for it. Put it aside. In in everything that changes, if there's some things that aren't on state contract, what is there a percentage that y'all can do? Yep. Correct. Explain how that works a little bit. Okay, we're we're allowed, I believe, up to up to fifteen percent over that, and that's that's with anything. I mean, you can add equipment to the truck. Uh, even if it's equipment I don't sell, you decide to buy a truck on state contract and you want to put MSA air packs on it, we can buy those air packs for you and put them on there. We'll buy them from your, your vendor, whoever that, whoever that happens to be. But uh, state contract allows us to make, make a great deal of changes. We can add a lot of cost to a truck if, if you want. Uh, the way the state contract is set up, it has some uh, other items that aren't listed and that's where that falls in at. And uh, you can be you can be very liberal with it. You can you can change, make a lot of changes to that truck. Uh, and again, you can you can equip it with with your hose, your nozzles, the whole nine yards, and you can add that into the cost of it and do it all at once if you choose to do that. Especially if you're going to buy, say you're buying four or five air packs and putting equipment on it and all that, it's going to go over thirty thousand dollars. Which, if you were buying, you know, out on your own, you would be in a position where you're going to have to bid that. You add it to that state contract, and you don't have to bid that. It, it folds right into the truck. It comes out on the state contract, just like it was part of the truck. So, uh, I think Galvana has bought theirs all state contract, haven't they? Yeah, we did. Yeah. And, and he said something about they finance them. I mean, I know we may not need to, but. Maybe on center, he's going to center finance her up there, I guess, our next board meeting. Yeah, probably D.C. Greer. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell you a little bit about financing, what's going on right now. There's, there's some tools on the Internet that can help you with this. Uh, if you're facing an aging fleet of trucks and you're trying to save enough money every year to buy a truck, but say you're only able to save 290000 but the trucks will cost you three hundred twenty. Is it's hard to ever get to that point because by the time you get to that 320, the trucks went up another $5,000 or more. 
and it keeps doing that. Uh, say versus finance. Sometimes it's cheaper to finance a truck if you're having to, to wait these long periods, if you have a lot of maintenance costs going. Uh, and finance is cheap right now. It's anywhere from three to four and a half percent, depending on what you're doing and how far you're going out. Uh, they'll finance these trucks. Uh, they'll finance a pumper out to 12 years, I think, 15 in some cases, if you want to, if you want to do that, depending on depending on how you want to do it. Uh, you don't make a payment on them until they get delivered, or as far as a year after it gets delivered. If you want to pay the interest on that, that's they're more than willing. Uh, most of these in, most of these finance companies are are investor backed with uh, tax free bonds, so you you save a great deal of money. They can give you some finance rates usually that nobody else does. Uh, we even had a bank over in Kashawa. The guys wanted to do their money local. DC Rigger, same guy coming down to see them. He actually made a deal with their bank, and they loaned him the money on, on the tax free end of it because it's a municipal loan. And he was able to loan the money, DC was, to the department cheaper than what the bank originally could, just because of the way he said it. All right. Uh, now, your truck, your Rosenberg, now, Rosenberg. You're, you're, are you a local to this state? I am local. Where is your company? Where, I mean, our company is in Rain, Louisiana. We're a little over 100 miles from here. We've got a 10 by 10 bay state uh, station, 10 bay shop down there. We've got EVTs, mechanics. Uh, we've got our equipment down there. EVT, emergency vehicle technician. Emergency vehicle technician. There's several categories that they can all be certified in. And we've got we've got guys certified in several of those. Okay, so Rain, that's not that far of a drive. No, it's us. not. <clears throat> It's just down I-49 a little bit. We've, we've got a lot of trucks up through here and on over in the western part of the state. What kind we'll of come here a good bit. Do you, do you send your service guys up this way a good bit? We send them, we'll send them this way or we, I don't, has Dennis ever come to any work for you or do you know? No, he hadn't come. Okay. I think he had it over on, uh, toward, uh, Magnus over there. Yeah, he has, on, he has. Way. And, uh, we've been, this guy's super, we've been very, very fortunate to get a hold of him. He's also working on his own out there. And you're local. You're like John. I'm right? living in John's where I live. Uh, I've been calling on Wind Parish for six or seven years now. I've uh, been coming through here. Wind Parish has been good to me, and I've tried to be good back. Uh, one of the things I'll say about myself, I come from the fire department, still active in the fire department, still going on calls, served on fire board before. Uh, I've sat on your side of the table. I, uh, I try to be the buffer between y'all and Rosenbier, and I'm gonna stand up for you every time. I assure you of that. Now where I've got they, to live here. And where are these trucks made at? They're made in South Dakota. So uh, it would be a be a nice little trip for someone if they want to go do a final inspection, especially if you go in December when it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was there in January, and they actually closed schools. It was 19 degrees below zero. The wind chill was 39 below zero. Yeah. So, <laughs> but those guys keep working, man. They keep on working. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Steve? It'll, it'll make Louisiana home sweet home. You stay up there long enough. So. so. All right. All right. Well, appreciate you coming okay. in. Well, thank y'all. My card's there individually. If y'all want to call, got any questions, I mean, there, there's no question you should be afraid or ashamed to ask. Just ask me, and I'll, I'll try and help you get through it best I can. And, you know, if you want to go a little further than this, I will get y'all some references, some guys you can see that's, that's been using our trucks and uh, had experience with us and had been through the buying process with you. So, and if I need to have D.C. or, I've got a couple of finance people. One of those finance people come I was just curious. Uh, because I, I knew they were doing it. I'm just curious how it worked. Just well, that. some people are on a situation where they're trying to buy trucks, you know, every year or two, and they get into a case where they got they got six or seven trucks they need to replace, and they can't do it all at one time like that. And uh, they figure it out it's cheaper for them in the long run. It's going to be cheaper or the same cost to finance that truck and get those get, get all those trucks at one time. So, 
I don't know if that's something y'all were thinking about or whatever. I just, but yeah, I just heard about it. It's food, it's food for thought because uh, a lot of people are taking advantage of it now because I, I know the little, little day of money I got in the bank on the, on the CD, they just uh, they sent me a little slip ever ever so often just as a courtesy. I think because you know, I'm not gaining any ground, folks. I mean, it's not making any money. So people are more willing to loan you money at three three and a half percent right now. All right. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. And I do appreciate all y'all's past business. Uh, I hope you were satisfied with my end of it, what I tried to do. Like I said, if anybody got any questions, feel free to give me a call. Thank y'all. person here, so he's probably ready to go, but I'll make it uh, fairly quick. I'm Shane Delaney. I'm with uh, Ferrer Fire Apparatus. I live in, uh, and this is Courtney Butcher, and this is Mr. Wade. He drove the truck up for me. Much appreciated. Courtney's full-time firefighter at Bossier City, and he uh, sells equipment for us part-time. Um, we both live in Bossier Parish, and I live in uh, Benton, and he lives in the Houghton area. Uh, our factory is in South Louisiana. It's off of I-12, if you've ever been down that way, close to Hammond. Um, we manufacture it. We're a family-owned company. Um, the owner started, a, and that's in, in the book here. I know everybody didn't have it, but that article up front is a story how he got started. And I'll say that it was a, uh, he was a pipe fitter, and he was a volunteer fireman anyway, started building, and where we're at, we're now. Um, I'm very fortunate I've been working here 18 years and I have a lot of good customers and then I have other uh, places like y'all's that I would like to earn your business. Um, to get down to what we were talking, what y'all are probably here for is that truck outside that I brought today is a 2,000 gallon tanker. I put the specifications in there shop order to tell you more about it. Um, that truck is sold but they could build you one and um, from pre-construction, we got some chassis coming in, so probably about four months in that area. Things can change because of chassis coming in and stuff. Um, we are a custom builder. We're different than a lot of other people. We use different metals. We use the extruded aluminum uh, body, a gabinel steel, which is modular, and then a modular aluminum body and stainless steel that we sell a lot on the East Coast. Um, we are, like I said, a custom builder to where I can, we can build the truck if it can be engineered to your specifications. You can sit down with y'all, you can build your own truck, and at the end of the day, you will know how much that truck's going to be, and you'll have your own set of specifications. Um, we do have other demos available now too, and I can email, um, I can email Chief once things change. But as far as the um, uh, commercial side of it, we, we right now we only have one two-door freight liner, 1, or 1250 water, 1250 pump, and that's in Texas right now. Uh, we do have chassis on the lot, and it would just depend on what GBW that you're going to build for the time period that it would take to, to build it. Uh, and, and one of our board members is 
eight things. To, we're probably looking more for the uh, pumper tanker combination now, um, and need probably going to get some pricing on something like that in the near future. Um, and I know y'all can make anything, obviously. Yes, sir. Custom manufacturing. <coughs> Um, what benefits combined from y'all, what do you, I mean, you're in the state, obviously, mm -hmm. so uh, it's already a Louisiana-built product, it's state contract. Um, the benefits from, from buying from us would be, we, we are in the state, and, and not just to, to, just to use that as an excuse for you to buy, but what that means is you can come to our plant to do a pre-construction, you can come to the plant, and of course you can to these other places, it's just take you a while, and you come to the plant and do a final inspection. Also, if you ever had a truck that needed to go back to the plant for either wreck or something that needs to be repaired that you can't do in the field, then you have a plant that's close. Um, yes, or about four hours. The other aspect is our, our service guy works directly for us, and he lives in Bossier Parish as well. Not to say he can't be in Oklahoma one day, but he's usually very good in response time, and uh, he works out of his uh, out of his vehicle. And you can, like all of us, I believe, my competitors, you can buy off Lamas, the um, state contract, so to say, and most trucks you you would be able to to build up to the to the state contract because you can you can most configurations you'd still be in the state contract area. Uh, I put a couple of drawings in the in there as well on trucks that I have sold myself. I was going through there. I wanted to put that I sold in case there was any questions on them. But there's like a pumper. There's a there's a full tanker in there that uh, Cato Fire District Five has. It's a pumper tanker, 3,000 gallons, um, but we can we can build whatever normally, um, whatever you need if it can be engineered. So basically, we we now had everybody kind of give us an idea. We we know what's available, what's close. And I guess there's going to be some more research for our part. And um, believe me, Kane, I'll probably be calling on y'all to get some ideas and whatnot. Uh, and I would love to offer the invitation to, and I know it's tough because people have regular jobs, but um, for your board or if you're going to have a committee, a truck committee, to go to the plant one day to see it. Now, I, I do have <coughs> an advantage of me being close because y'all can drive to it. But still, you could see some ideas. Um, oh, thank you. And um, and our website has a lot of um, trucks that have been delivered uh, over the years and in, in production now. It's another thing that you can view is your truck being built via the website. Oh, okay. They update it about every two or three days. So it's <coughs> and I, I, I looked at Joe's truck out there. I know that truck's may not be exactly what we're looking at there, but I was looking at the build quality, I was looking at the switches, how y'all build in the dash. I like some of the stuff, I took some pictures, and I'll be able to look at that. But that's what I was, you know, you know, this truck here may not be exactly what we want. He's also, you, you're going to try to come up with something similar to the, the other pumper tanker out there maybe for us? Yeah, I, I can do that. I can, uh, I took some pictures of it to see if, if we can, I, I'm, I would think we can. That, we would be able to build and um, see what y'all's price range, how that works. Yeah, I just, guess that would be something though that would be under state contract, or would that be able to fall under state contract? That probably would be. I'd have to look, but on that truck, you, you've got a poly. What we call that? That truck's called what you call wet side because you have the tank, and they they have painted the tank. So you've got the poly upper, which is the tank spill out, and then you've got the poly hose bed. And yeah, we can do that. If, if you were going to build a house side compartment on that left to make it a pump or tanker, then that would all be metal. That would be um, either galvanized steel or aluminum, extruded aluminum. We use all of our high side compartment doors are all 316 cents aluminum, regardless of you have a steel body. Uh, 
but you could do that and you could do like the rack on the side like you said for a dump tank rack um, to where it would be uh, electrically lifted down for you which is that is smart um, to do that okay. yes sir any other questions well, we appreciate the opportunity, and uh, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. stations and we're still trying another heater for Mr. Billy's station. He wanted to try a what kind radiant. of heat? a radiant heat. And we ran into some issues with it hook hooking that up. All right. Have we done paid for the catering service? We paid a down payment because the price of meat was so high. Um, I, at that time I, I got a hold of Mike and um, I think one other board member, and he wanted to know if we'd get a down payment so he could order the meat. He ordered um, 15. How much? How much? I don't got what the bank was going to talk to you. Yeah, 15 dollars. 15 dollars a person, and we're estimating 200 people. Cranford is going to help with this side for the sheriff's people, so we'll get some of that back. Okay, I just curious. All right, motion made, sir. Maybe second, I'll be able to say aye. Any other proposed claim sign? Uh, new fire chief for Cal. Well, obviously, Mr. John Henry's sitting here, and I guess you decided to retire, sir. And we got a letter from uh, the village of Calvin, resolution number one for 2015. Where is the present fire chief, John Henry Martin? Second, um, uh, is retired from that position, therefore it be resolved that the Village of Calvin Council hereby appoint Bill Martin to serve as fire chief of the Volunteer Fire Department. And um, it was voted and elected by the City of Calvin, Village of Calvin, to put um, Bill and the, uh, the Bill Martin to take John Henry's place. Mr. John Henry, I want to say congratulations on retiring and thanks for a job well done. I had took came over that week and we had that far over on the Selene Lake over on the, the dump and uh, 
I was walking around down there and I'd give out and I sit down on the truck. I couldn't even get up in the truck. Mm. And I sat down on the floorboard until I could get a little strength back up. And then I got up in the truck and went back home and I went to the, as soon as they met, I went to them and told them that I was resigning from it and then somebody else had it. I stay on the fire department, but I ain't going to be cheap no more. Does everybody know Bill is your son? Yeah. We won't let it get <laughs> He's been working in the department a good while. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I know the boy. He's a good boy. All righty. Uh, let's see. We got to make a motion to accept it for ourselves. I didn't think it. I guess we would. I saw many things. Motion by the Secretary of State, Bill Martin, Mr. Fire Chief of County. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same time. All right, PIL. All right, PIL has really came out with wanting lots of information. This here, so far, is what we've come up with for them. They just want more and more and more information. We're still making some contact with the different water systems around. I've got to go out and get some pictures of the different water systems yet, get their daily average consumption. Um, as part of the thing that they're wanting, they're wanting all the fire trucks, sheets, pictures. We're getting all that done, so that'll help Brian with him. We've been working real hard at it. Um, unfortunately, I, I with... Um, Dustin Parker having his baby this week. He had to be out for that, and we had had Heath uh, been filling in, bring, coming in, working on PIAL with us, and then he had to fill the shift for Dustin. So he ended up getting a little bit of overtime. We're in the middle of PIAL. I, I, I had called Kenneth Ray and let him know. We will try not to do that anymore, but we're still going to use as many of the volunteers that are, we have part time paid people. Because this, we, we got an extension, and even as much as this looks, we still probably need to add about another inch worth of paperwork to this to get this done. You got 17 days left, don't you? I have 17 days, yes, sir. All right. And now we are suggest. working hard. Now I'll make a suggestion. Yes, sir. Right now, to me, you need to concentrate totally on that. Are yes, sir. Or about the other trucks? I don't know if something breaks down, but that, that's, that's a, got to be done. That's yes, got sir. to be done. Uh, according to that letter, letter I read, if it ain't done, we go to we SOL. We SOL. So that is it. That is our main drive around here every day. And that will get in the mail. I'm going to try to get it in the mail. I'm hoping to get it in the mail before maybe the 26th or 27th. What my goal is. I mean, that's something that we... Hmm. Yeah. We're not looking too bad on it. Uh, we we went through we we've, we've done most of the work. We've just got to get it recorded the way they want it recorded. And I, I've talked to Randy Lowe every day on the phones about trying to make sure that we're getting this right. He's going to let let us do some of it on the computer. We still have to have a hardbound copy that has to be mailed and signed because that's how they verify that this is all above board. We do have um, two affidavits that I'll have to sign. And I'll, I think I'm the signing agent on those. If not, I'll be tracking you down. <laughs> I've done tracking down two or three times to get a signature on stuff. But PIAL is going good right now. It's just a lot to it, a lot more than I ever imagined. Part of the thing going on with PIAL, and that's going to be another number eight on the agenda tonight, is mutual aid agreements. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I found that we're lacking a few mutual aid agreements. So I've got a list of who I'd like to get some with here in a little bit, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, the current mutual aids that we do have on file. I just go ahead and bring it, move that up, bring it on there now, it's in there. Now, it's not to say that we don't have them, but I just can't find records of them. And I found I had to have copies of all the mutual aid agreements. And some of these mutual aid agreements are actually between the different volunteer fire departments and them. And I don't know if it was before the fire district was formed, but we got Town of Isla and the Joyce Fire Department. 
that was signed, well, that was effective yeah. 05, but I, I, I'm still thinking it's part of the district. Tullis and Wynn Parish Fire District 3, Georgetown and the Fire District 3, Montgomery and St. Maurice, Wynn Parish School Board and the Cypress Creek Station, I think that's part of an agreement because they own the land that it's on. Uh, Wynn Correctional Center, we have a mutual aid agreement with them. Winfield Fire Department, Bienville Parish Ward 7, Bienville Parish Ward 4, Goldana District 2, wherever Mr. Uh, Grant Parish District 7, Grant Parish District 2, Montgomery and Atlanta. So I'd like... That's the ones you're liking? No, that's, what, that's the only ones I can find the actual physical copies of the mutual aid agreement. I don't know there's one from Dodson to Sykes, I know, but they lost yeah. So I don't know where they are in the records I'm looking for. That's just something I won't, that's something that we'll do as part of following through. Is I would like to probably go with um, Wood Parish Fire Grant Parish Fire right. District 4, Georgetown. Um, Montgomery, right updated the uh, Jonesboro Fire Department, Jackson Ward, okay. Poor, Weston. And I'm not so sure about Gina. Mala and Tullis, I'd definitely like to get. I'd like to get one with Natchitoches Fire. Oh, I'm looking at the ones, the stars. Jonesboro, Gina, Urania, Eden Fellowship, I think I'd like to get one with them. Oh, I'll be able to pass, y'all. Bill Parish. If I'm not mistaken, they do like one page. They got their own board, don't they? I believe so. Yeah, they, they have multiple. They don't have one fire district, though. They have multiple fire districts. Oh, okay. and they have Ward 4, Ward 2, and we don't probably need one of the Harris, Vernon, Kelly. And no. them. I'm just trying to get the ones that are close by, and then the other ones I want to look for are like Pineville. I'd like to do with Lincoln Parish. And I'd like to do Natchitoches Fire Department and one, probably one more of the Natchitoches Fire Protection Districts like Clarence that are close by. And, and just Lincoln Parish, you'll parish up. We'll parish up. And, but if they're another individual fire district that parish wide like we are and they have some uh, good resources that we could use. Um, I also want to do with like England Air Park. So in case anything happens where we need a big crash rescue truck, they they could come. So, I mean, I, I mean I, I'll, I'll have to make calls and see, but that's, I just need y'all's permission, I guess, to go ahead and start looking into that. I don't think it has to be voted or anything, just to say go do it. But that is PIAL. We are working on it. It's getting thicker and thicker. and. Um, it's making phone calls, trying to find people. Heath has been on the phone call with, well, you know, he's tracked down um, um, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby Bowles. He's tracked down the different mayors, and he got a hold of you, I think, one time about the Calvin water system. I do I, need, you told me he needed information, and I called him and gave it to him. Okay, but I was going to tell you if you need any, uh, need any help contacting some of these other fire districts or water districts. And old water pump just boards holler at you. Okay, I do. If there's some that you don't, that you're not able to get a hold of, we got some that are having difficulty getting. We got a couple of them. We need to know their average daily consumption, how much water they got on hand at all times. It's just lots of information that we need for that. So we'll get with you on that. So that's that's where PIEL stands. We are working on it. It is taking up pretty much all of our time and now we'll take up all our time at this point for all right uh, buildings buildings all right I've got a price to move the building in Wheeling that y'all had asked about at the last meeting it's a thousand dollars at that price I'm not so sure that it's I don't know what to do I'll let y'all how big is that, Brian? I believe it was the 16 by 24 uh, wood structure with frame, shingle roof. It's got a little bathroom offset to it, but uh, kind of assessed it over to see what kind of repairs it would take to. You know, a lot of it's going back. You have to back up to decide 
first of all, what the need is for it and what you're going to purpose it for. And then it will determine how far you need to take the repairs into it, you know. Uh, as a minimum to get it to even just to use it as a storage, you're looking at about three thousand dollars just to do repairs. Uh, uh, and if you take it into an office stage, well, you know, you can double that. Yeah. Of course, now if, if you if you evaluate the the space that you would use for storage versus building something to store it. And then you know you're still looking at a structure that that's it's that age, yeah. and you don't well, know what's going to be compromised by in the moving process. Yeah. 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 All right, where All right, let me. I just still got one more thing. Um, at the last meeting, we had looked at getting a um, shelter for the tankers, and as you were talking. We had approved buying that building, but you described that you wanted the structure to be wide enough to put the two trucks in. Right. We went out and measured that night and found out that an 18 foot wide building would not be wide enough. So we have not bought anything. I called Brian Montgomery and told him, and he said I needed to bring it back before y'all. So we got the other two bids to get one that's 24 foot wide. We got one from American Steel, and we got one from Eagle Carports. That's the only two. That's the only two. I'm trying to make sure I'm looking at this right because I was trying to trying to do the math. And Eagle Carports has a 24 by 60 with 12 foot side legs. Um, and he's quoting anchors 12 at uh, $25 each to add $300 to his price. So I thought I added this all up. No, yeah, his total price comes out with these anchors to $98.55, but he doesn't have a wind warranty. The other building is 24 by 61, 12 foot size, 12 foot gauge, 12 foot leg height, and 22 mobile home anchors at $25 each to give a 90 mile an hour wind warranty for a total price of $10,225. $10,225. If you add the extra anchors on the cheaper price, if you add the extra uh, anchors, if you had, you know, but they were 12 or 22. Which one got the thicker metal? They're both the same, 12 gauge T. I got and, them to spec on both the 12 gauge. And you got one with wind warranty. But uh, if you, like I said, you add the extra 10 acres, 10 acres, you had the same price either way. But the uh, American Steel Carport, I think, is the one that he did off of the. Nine mile hour wind warranty with it, which that to me, I say it's a good thing because you're looking at a big parachute sitting out there on the ground, you know, three sides. We do get some wind around here. Yes, that right. is three sided, right? Yes, yes. that's three sides enclosed. Right. Where were we at on our other 80s? 84, 82, something like that. Something about a little more than a thousand. About 1200 more. Eight foot. Now, both of these in their specs, we would probably have to get another load of gravel out here. They do want it to be kind of level. <coughs> so, gravel down there so we need to probably get some more gravel. That'd be something we just do the police jury or do some other sort of stuff. And I'm not sure of this. Definitely, I mean, they give you new when something happens. Yeah. 
and that's why he's given the uh, 22. Yeah, this has 22 anchors, where this other one only has 12 anchors. So, you know, the difference in anchors would bring the prices even closer together. Mm -hmm. We got we got Harry to call the National Weather Service and, and not, <laughs> not broadcast any winds over 90 miles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that our warranty would be good. Yeah, there's no wind anyway. All right, we're going to make a motion for that to be by the American Steel Car Forge. American Steel Car Forge, 22 anchors. Sure. Motion makes that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Yeah. All right. Uh, Registration volunteer page or. Yeah. Warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Warehouser. In the past, Dotson has sent manpower up there when they've had fire alarm or fire feature closures. And they pay, and it's been going through the Dotson Fire Department because their truck was their truck before the department, and they've been able to handle it to the CEO. The other day they needed an extra truck and manpower, and we sent a truck and a man. And we, I'm not sure how it works, and I've called several people, but I know that um, there are set cases for fire department setting fees for recovering costs for doing standby. Cost recovery for fire department responses, um, the water removal, fire department responses for non residential fires. Um, It's not something that's unheard of. I talked with um, Jerry Loomis. He he's under the impression that I know, like when the fire departments went and sat down at the different hazmat incidents, they were able to build. You're familiar with some of this. It's just we need to have some kind of structure or fee schedule set. Used to have one. Okay. I don't know where it happened, but I mean, I remember used that one, but I don't have to do it on the uh, airplane crash and on uh, the truck wreck to add all that airplane fuel and all that stuff on Basically what Don Garrett, each was wanting y'all to say that, that, that we can, we have the check sitting in there from Warehouser. We have the fireman that's set up there um, that needs to be paid. Um, at that time, we weren't sure exactly. We, we, when he went up there, he was under the impression it was twenty dollars an hour. From what Don Garrett tells me, what, what he would rather see us do is when we send somebody up there, that we put them on the clock down here, still bill warehouse at twenty dollars an hour per man, because our cost per man, we have to pay insurance, we have to pay tax. It cost us more than just the ten dollars an hour we pay the man there. We have FIC taxes, uh, Social Security taxes, so it's to supplement so that we can cover that man's cost. So what we're looking at in the future is being able to, if we do have, if they call, and this is their insurance company requiring us, asking us to go up there. It's not a true emergency, and that's why we can bill. It's not a true emergency. It's something they want. And their insurance company wants to pay for, they want us to be there. So, and we just need y'all's approval to um, cash that check and uh, pay that man based on what he was agreed on at that time and in the future. We would just do it as a um, pay them off the clock and then put that money right in the coffers and then bill for the fire truck at whatever rate y'all think is sufficient. And the legalities of being able to bill for a higher amount and pay a man lower amount has already been checked into? Not totally. Yeah, uh, it's Lee or CPA. Remember what she said? Can I tell them? Yes, please. She said that we need the board to approve that we contact the Attorney General, get the Attorney General uh, briefing on this whole process. Uh, that works too, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be legal. If, it, if they're legal, then, then, the, then the setting of the fees. But I don't know. I, I just think <coughs> we need to get the attorney general. You have to be able to uh, 
good for losses. You don't talk ten dollars a night, you pay him ten dollars a night, you wind up, you got social security, family and all that, you got well, the, the process is this may not be legal to begin with. That's 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 the crux of the whole thing. Can we even do it? Oh, okay, okay. That's the purpose of the attorney general. If we if we if we can't do it, we can we can set a rate. If it's legal to do it, we can set all that rate. But if, 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 if we're going to wind up in hell with us, we do it. No, no, no. I hear you. Does FEMA have set rates for this type of thing? Yes, there are things that you can go to FEMA. You know, get them declared a merchant. That they'll tell you how much a, a class A is. On and on and on and on. You can get what the FEMA going rates are, and that'd be, that'd be fairly easy to do. I can tell you that I have worked three different hazardous material incidences where the company was required to pay, and during those incidences, they were required to pay us the full amount of what was paid okay. per hour to each fireman. Okay. It had something to do with a nonprofit situation. So I think that the 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 move that we need to make as a board would, would be to pursue the attorney general's opinion on that. Whether and, and what I think Chief is talking about is if if the company is going to pay X amount of dollars per man and X amount of dollars per truck and equipment, then can we set a rate for those men that is pre-arranged with those men that they can go and work that scene and be paid that amount? Anything over that comes back to the fire department. That's what you're asking. Yes, sir. Well, the difference being, being, being in an emergency, a hazmat, which is a no-brainer, versus a they call it just want it. Because their insurance company says, we want a fire truck there. It's not a fire. It's not an emergency. Our, our fire suppression system's down. We will pay if you'll come see. We just need to make that standby rate for the truck and the firefighter a matter of public record in here. That's all we need to do. Yeah, once it's well, a matter of public record. Really, all you have to do is set a rate for the fire truck. And I would think we just set a rate for the fire truck. Per personnel. Yeah. Because they may require so many personnel depending on the scene or the, the need. Okay. All right. we'll but, but the main issue is will it whether it's legal to do or not. Mm -hmm. Resolve that issue first, then everything else is just secondary to that. Right. Okay. All right. I guess we just need to contact Karen. If you'll author if she said if you'll if you'll authorize Troy or Amiga, whichever one, to get the number from her and we'll contact Whichever one, whichever one you need more leader, I will. Y'all, however y'all want to handle it. And you once, got it, brother. And once that information is gained, we'll bring it back. Bring it back. Right. If they say it's legal, we'll pass it back, let's go. If they say it's not illegal, or I don't know what you do with the Bible. All right, that'll work. I don't think we need no motion on that either. No, nothing. Speed up the bank. All right, now then. The structure of the volunteer paid for the fire call. All right, guys, I, I was the one that kind of have had been thinking about this. I'm not asking that we take any action on this tonight or anything. I just want to propose, or not really propose anything. I just want us to kind of talk about it and everybody think about it. And then maybe later, if y'all want to do something about it, we can. I know that there's been some times in the past where sometimes the volunteer turnout on certain types of fires has been thin. Um, and I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it's just various circumstances. I don't know. But um, I was looking at what we're currently paying for the, the various fire types um, for volunteers. And I believe, if, correct me if I'm wrong, the only thing we're currently paying for is $10 uh, for a structure fire. We're not paying for anything for grass fires, woods fires, or vehicle fires. And um, maybe some of those fire types, maybe we don't need a lot of volunteers. But if, if you have a big woods fire, you know, like we've had several of here lately. I'm just thinking that uh, maybe as a way to possibly or potentially boost our volunteer turnout, uh, that maybe we consider some amount uh, for one or maybe all of those fire types. Um, I know I've been told it's been discussed previously uh, by previous boards. You know, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I just want to put it out there and let y'all think about it. Uh, maybe y'all have some thoughts on it. <clears throat> I think they ought to be paid the same amount. If you respond, if you leave your job, you'll have to respond to a fire. You know, 
that to me it ought to be the I same agree. thing as structure fire. Amen. Yeah, you're putting your life in danger until you find a new building fire or wood store or whatever. You your money to drive your vehicle to try to help somebody. That's right. And it's the same thing with the structure fire. Uh, and I, that all I asked Ms. Margaret to run some numbers, and you'll see in your your uh, folder there that she did. Uh, in 2014, we had a total of 151 uh, recorded uh, incidents. Uh, 31 of them were structure fires. 78. Uh, let's see, total volunteers responding were 78. Average paid per person. That's just average of 60. Highest paid 340, lowest paid 10 bucks. Um, total monies paid out last year 4700. Um, and then I asked her to run some numbers uh, as if we were paying just uh, based on three bucks. I just pulled that out of the air, okay? Just to see what about what it would cost us if we'd been paying for the other uh, fire types last year, uh, uh, three bucks per person. Uh, I mean per fire per volunteer. Uh, it would have cost us less than $3,000. And I realize that that's not a lot of money for a volunteer, but it's more of a gesture, a goodwill gesture, just saying, here, this will pay for your gas, at least, you know, a little bit of it anyway. We appreciate your but coming it, out. At $10, it wouldn't have been right. $6,000. Really. It, exactly. So, Plus I mean, we're not, we're not talking about a fortune here, but I just, I would like for us to, uh, to consider that. And uh, I, I would like to see us pay some amount on the other fire types. I and the amount is up for discussion. Well, to me, it's worth just as much for a house fire as it is a car fire or a grass fire. I spent I, I, two I, years I, ago, I, these guys were running <laughs> at least three <laughs> nights a week, four nights a week, St. Maurice, and spending half a night down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's they get up going right. to work at our other job next right. month. Yeah. Well, and didn't get nothing signed. Well, I, it, it sounds like to me that most everybody here feels the same way I do about it. Uh, and if that be the case, uh, how do y'all feel about the, the amount? I was thinking three to five bucks, but we could go ten. And I, I, personally, I, I'm, saying, I'm talking personally. You know, it costs you just too much to go to the grass bar. If it does go to the poultry bar. That be the case, then I would the same thing straight across the board. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would move that we restructure our volunteer pay to include all fire types at the same amount as the structure fire. And I so move. So I second. Motion to make a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. All right, I do the same. Um, I would like us to be able to get our own ID machine. Somewhere in my mess here, there is a catalog from a company called DeVille. They have ID machines in the price range. Right there. Uh, I've been looking for it all day, and there it is. That's you, sir, receive. Thank you, sir, because it says board item IDs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we had a bid one time for a from a lady out of Shreveport, and I mean, she was like $7,000. I mean, I can find ID machines in this catalog. I can even find two-sided machines um, that'll probably do what we need for less than $3,000. Um, I'd just like to <coughs> permission to kind of come up with the best thing and just buy. I mean, it's under a bid price. Um, I just need us the best ID machine we can get. I have my own cameras. We don't need their cameras. Uh, we just need a, the software and the card printer. How we handle IDs now? We don't have any more. Oh, we got plenty of IDs, but we just ain't got nothing to make it. We've been trying to work with the sheriff's office. So far, that's just not working. Just, the ID machine that the sheriff's office got, and I bought it with Homeland Security money four or five years ago with paid. Three thousand dollars for it, and I'm sure we'd probably get one similar to it for a reasonable you know, with a little, a little bit of raise, maybe. I've got the information available. I'll get Rice to have that on there. I got I the information available. Back, back last there. summer, that we had agreed to buy an ID machine. I we think never did come up with a price. Yeah, I, I had, had one time. Mr. Billy. I had brought it up, yeah. and whenever I brought it up, you wanted me to get prices, and that crazy lady up there at Treeport, she had eight thousand astronomical figures. Mm -hmm. And this is a company here that 
sends us something every month, and I mean the prices are reasonable. As fast as they go out of date, you're probably going to need a cheaper one anyway. And I just want permission to spend under like under three thousand dollars to give a machine. Two sides, two sides, and color and pictures on them. And I think I can get that. We just did software and a printer and then supplies. We got 500 uh, um, cards already. Outside of Baton Rouge, that has they're called Cardiac Sciences. They're on state contract for the actual real AED. I don't know that y'all want to get any of those just yet, but as part of our class for um, CPR and all, we need a trainer. The trainer is like three hundred ninety-nine dollars um, for AED trainer. 
I have a question. Have you talked to uh, what was right there, sir? Up here. Sir? It was part of the one that brought the AD got a rap off. Rapid Foundation. Um, Rapid Foundation. And America. He's out of that business now. Uh, Kevin Chandler is the person that's going to be a trainer for the fire district. He's scheduled for two classes in March to train, and part of it is to have the AED without us going full board to the AED business. You know, I think several stations had AEDs, but they've all expired, all the batteries are dead. But it's part of part of the training. It just requires to have the AED training. So Tommy's not in that. They won't put right yeah. 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 somebody local yeah. rather than somebody out yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Kevin Chandler's going to the training. Yeah. No, he's doing the training. He's not selling the AEDs. He's oh, no, no. He's he's not not this is uh, just, just, just purchase a trainer for the. That's a machine. It's not a person. It's a machine that simulates. Oh, okay. It's it's a, it's a good AED. In other words, the AED itself is twelve ninety five on the state contract. The trainer is like three ninety nine. Um, really, from what I remember of it, you really didn't need anything because you just it was pretty much self declared. Well, that's what it is now. Yeah, yeah it it talks you through everything. Yeah. And, and these AEDs are only twelve ninety five. So we need one AED and one trainer. What you're saying, right? I would like to get one. Of the one AED and one trainer. Well, I'm saying, well, what's the trainer for? The AED tells you what to do. Kevin's going to do the class. The trainer won't shock so you. It. And it will certify the class. Yeah. You get the, the certification, you have to have the, the trainer along with the AED. You have to have that as part of the class to get certified to do it. It's just, it's just the way it's set up. I'd like to get one, at least one AED for here, either at this station or to keep them in my truck. Maybe even more. I know what I've run into when we had one. Was the, battery. the first one I replaced was over two hundred dollars. These first everywhere around here that I can find somebody and, and said, no, we're not financing those. I devoured it. And that I second one went down. Just the, and that the second one I just decided, well, we don't need it anymore. The batteries on these have a four year warranty. If they go out if they go out three hundred you know, three years and 200 days, you get a new. The the machine is it has a little green light. It self analysis up every day, and as long as it's green, the, the system's ready to go. It even cross checks the pads. Um, this was the company that I saw um, down in um, Baton Rouge at the show, and um, I, that's the lowest price I've seen on AED. Is state contract 1295, and it's a good AED. I had. Um, I had all the ambulance guys here when he came and gave the demonstration about this. They were very impressed. Uh, uh, they think it's a nice unit. The Powerheart AED G3 Plus, the flagship of automated external distributors. It even has a way if the pads are plugged in, it checks them whether they dry out or not. So. I ain't here first with myself, but they took me to his time. Well, it's an important tool. And, um, you know, they've, they've been proven to save a lot of lives. What if one of us goes down out there? And, um, well, that's the purpose for the firefighters, not the general. It's a small, it's a it's small price happen. to pay because if you do the research, number one cause of yeah. um, of deaths in the fire service is heart-related stress, cardiac arrest, and uh, I, I know that it's a small price to pay to give some surety to the firemen that are out there. And, um, and of course, having the trainer unit is the ideal situation to be able to properly train every individual on how, how to actually use that device. How much is the trainer? Three ninety-nine. Three ninety-nine. You know, when you do CPR classes, they bring in little dummies for you to, to test on, and there's a reason they bring those so you can actually get hands-on experience with it. So, uh, I have bought, I have a set of dummies here already. We're ready for this class. This is all we like to get this class going. I, I, I would go out and say, make a motion to purchase the trainer. And one unit or two. 
Are you requesting the I would like, one unit? I would like at least one and not the Do we have any units at the department at all? Does that work? No. Right. Right. So we're, we're looking at what's the cost? 1295 plus the train. So we just spent $3,500 on a laborer that cannot save a life. So I'm just looking at the priority of what this can do for the fire department. I would make a motion to buy the trainer in one unit. I second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same time. All right. Push the mail. All right. This, um, Christopher Winters would be number one. Do you? And I don't know how this, whether y'all need to go into executive session for this or not. Yeah. So you want to executive session, which means that don't, nobody in here can touch you. Okay. Go ahead. Maybe you have a special session.